Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel if it's your first time. For my subscribers, welcome as well. In this video, we will be learning all about thiazide diuretics. This is a continuation to my diuretics series, so make sure to check out the other videos if you haven't already. If you love my teaching style, then hit the like button and subscribe for more. Let's begin. Just like my previous videos, we shall begin by looking at the renal tubule. Once again, the renal tubule is kind of like a pipe that collects the waste and products that are filtered out of the blood by the kidneys. For more on this and the introduction to diuretics and the kidneys filtration system, check out the video right above. The thiazide diuretics work at the distal convoluted tubule of the renal tubule. Let's take a look at this area to see how the thiazides exert the action. So this is how it looks when we zoom in. We have the tubules here, the cells that line it, and the blood. In normal circumstances, the sodium chloride co-transporter facilitates the reabsorption of sodium and chloride from the tubule lumen. This area accounts for about 7% of total sodium reabsorption. Once the sodium and chloride enters the cell, the sodium moves into the cell through the sodium potassium AT pace, where three sodiums move into the blood in exchange for two potassiums. Some of the sodium in the blood can move back into the cell through the sodium calcium exchanger. So this will lead to a decrease in the intracellular calcium relative to the tubule lumen, which normally has more calcium. Due to this concentration gradient that is created, the calcium in the tubule lumen will move into the cell, and this will be facilitated by the parathyroid hormone. This calcium is then moved into the blood. The blood concentration of the calcium will be high and same as the sodium due to all the sodium being reabsorbed absorbed at the sodium chloride co-transporter. A sodium osmotic gradient is created as well due to the high sodium concentration in the blood. So because of this, water goes wherever the sodium is and water will move from the filtrate into the cells and then into the blood. Now, when a patient takes a thiazide diuretic, the following happens. First, they inhibit the sodium chloride co-transporter and this will lead to less sodium and chloride going into the cell. Second, because there is less sodium coming into the cell via the sodium chloride co-transporter, there will be less sodium to pump into the blood by the sodium potassium AT pace and less potassium entering the cell. Please remember that yes, there is less sodium moving into the blood, but when we compare the concentration of the blood sodium to the intracellular sodium, it's higher in the blood. This creates a concentration gradient, so therefore the blood sodium moves into the cells in order to establish equilibrium. The sodium moving into the cells may use the sodium calcium exchanger, so a lot of calcium will end up moving into the blood as the sodium moves into the cell. These processes lead to a concentration gradient being created where there is less calcium in the cell relative to the tubule lumen. This will cause even more calcium to move into the cells and then into the blood. Previously, water was shifting into the cells and then the blood because there was high sodium in the blood. Now, in this case, there is much less sodium in the blood. Therefore, water will not be reabsorbed from the tubules into the cells and then movement into the blood. So overall, we have decreased blood volume due to the less sodium and water in the blood and more being excreted and that is how we get the diuresis effect. Because of the overall effects, these agents are used for the following indications. Hypertension, where they are utilized as first-line agents, alone or in combination with other medications. These agents are also used for conditions associated with edema, fluid overload due to many conditions like heart failure, renal failure, and hepatic failure. Nephrolithiasis or kidney stones are hard deposits of minerals and acidic salts that stick together in concentrated urine in the tubules. Calcium being one of the components of the kidney stones that we commonly see. Thiazide diuretics are efficacious due to the ability to move the calcium from the renal tubules into the blood. If you did a quick search on the drugs in this class, you may see names like hydrochlorothiazide, chlorothiazide, chlorthalidone, indepamide, and metolazone. Whenever you have many drugs in one class, you always want to ask yourself, what is different about these agents? Well, let's start with the fact that hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothiazide both end with thiazide. 
but the other agents do not. You may have heard of the term thiazide-like diuretics. So the term thiazide essentially refers to diuretics that primarily works at the distal tubule. The thing with thiazide-like diuretics is that they are not chemically structured like the traditional thiazides, but they still work at the distal tubule. Get it? Thiazide-like. These agents lack the benzothiazine ring structure seen in traditional thiazides. Lastly, the thiazide like diuretics have a longer half life. Because of this, these agents are dosed less frequently and are able to achieve effective blood pressure reduction, especially during the nights. Let's learn about some of the adverse effects of these agents. By the way, if I'm doing a good job explaining this topic, then I will definitely appreciate it if you take one second to hit the like button. Thank you. Most of the adverse effects of thiazide diuretics stems from the ionic imbalances. First, hypokalemia. The reason this occurs is because when the filtrate arrives at the collecting duct, there is a concentration gradient created, so more sodium in the tubules and less in the cells. Sodium would then move into the cells. Some of the sodium will leave the cell through the sodium potassium ATPase. During this time, hydrogen ions are also moving into the cells, and the movement of sodium and hydrogen ions into the cells make the tubule very negative. This negative charge attracts positive cations into the cells, such as potassium and hydrogen ions, which would then move into the tubule. So you end up excreting more potassium and hydrogen ions as well, which can also lead to metabolic alkalosis. Now, potassium should be monitored during the first two to three weeks of treatment. Hyponatremia and hypercalcemia, I've discussed the mechanism already, so please go back and rewatch as needed. Thiazides may also cause hyperglycemia. The mechanism is related to the hypokalemia impacting the release of insulin by the pancreatic beta cells. These agents may also cause hyperuricemia. Thiazide diuretics can inhibit the movement of uric acid from the blood into the tubules by inhibiting the organic anion transporter. Another adverse effect seen with these agents is hyperlipidemia. The mechanism of hyperlipidemia with the thiazide is unclear. However, it appears to be an acute response to high doses of these agents. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you learned at least one thing. If you did, then hit the like button. Make sure to follow me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.